It's the classic question. I'm in the woods. I don't want to get killed by a bear. Am I going to pick the 10 millimeter auto or the 44 mag? That is the subject of this video. Gavin, you here from ultimatereloader.com. I'm back with Guy Miner. This is a good one, isn't it? It is. It was fun to make and uh, brought back some memories. Yeah, and it's a question that I have legitimately pondered. Am I going to do a 10 millimeter auto, which is kind of the go-to pick for a semi-auto for bear defense, or am I going to go with the 44 Magnum that I'm inherently more comfortable with? It's a big question. It is a big question. So in this video, here's what we're going to cover. We're going to cover what bear dynamics look like and bear attacks look like. Guy's going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about my Glock 20, which is, again, this is the classic 10 millimeter, really. It's a commodity. It's well-known. It's great aftermarket support. You know, it's not overly expensive. It's kind of the go-to. And then the 44 Magnum. And, and for this, we're using Guy's 5-inch 629. I feel like this is kind of the maximum length that's good for, for carry. And it's a good comparison to bring out basically the full potential of the 10 and the 44 mag. Uh, we're going to look at all of the metrics and the ballistics. Guy loaded up some ammo with 200 grain XTPs on the 10 side and 300 grain XTPs on the 44 mag side. Wanted to keep this kind of like a level playing field, apples to apples as much as possible. Uh, we shot some ballistics gel and we'll go over those results as well. And then of course at the very end we'll kind of give you our thoughts and impressions. And we would like to hear yours as well. So don't forget during this video to drop a comment to make your voice heard. So, bears. <laughs> bears. Now, I'm not trying to pretend that I'm a bear expert. I'm not. I am fascinated by bears. I have hunted bears quite a bit. I've got four black bears and one grizzly so far. Um, didn't get out this year. I wanted to. Didn't mm -hmm. make that happen. Well, um, we still have a little bit of time, don't we? A few days. Oh, we better get on it. Yes. <laughs> bear yes. hunting goes pretty late in the season, which is, is kind of awesome. Yeah, November 15th. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, there's still a chance. <laughs> <laughs> on the way home. Maybe on the way <laughs> right, home. Yeah. It's dark out there. I am home. Yeah, so, you are. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so bears, they're, uh, they're out there. Mm -hmm. uh, our state of Washington has over 30,000 black bear, mm -hmm. and they think a handful of grizzlies up in the northern parts of the state here and there. They've been on film, they've been recorded, but they don't seem to stick around real long. Mm -hmm. So there's grizzlies here, and the farther north you go, the more grizzlies you run into. Um, drove up to Fairbanks one time, and the farther north I got, the more grizzlies mm -hmm. I saw. Mm -hmm. Also, you get anywhere around Yellowstone, Grand Teton area, mm -hmm. that's kind of an epicenter of grizzlies spreading out, reclaiming their old range now. Yeah. And that's also a really popular backpacking area. Oh, yeah. So there's people and bears interfering mm -hmm. with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. When you think about our northern border with Canada, that's kind of the line for grizzly. And, and to some extent, they come down, mm -hmm. you know, even here in Washington. But it's not something that you're going to see all the time. Now, black bears, however, you know, they're all over the place. Well, it was only, what, two weeks ago we had a lady get attacked in Leavenworth? That's right. Just a few miles from here. Yeah, absolutely. And I was walking down our Jeep road, coming down from our mountain range, just this summer and just walking along with my dog and there's a black bear coming up the road. Yeah, and most of the time, they, they want nothing to do with us. Right. They, they, they would rather go on just being a bear, yep. doing their thing and, and leave us alone most of the time. Mm -hmm. Then there's those other times. Right, because both grizzly bears and black bears can attack and sometimes it's out of defense, right? Like let's say you have that unfortunate scenario where you get between the sow and her cubs mm -hmm. The worst case scenario, you're hiking through deep brush, they don't hear you, you don't hear them, all of a sudden, mom's over there and kids are over there, uh-oh, right? And then there's the predatory. There's the predatory thing. one, yeah. A lot of times that, from what I've read, is an adult male, a boar, mm -hmm. and he's gotten big and strong, and he hunts. Right. And he doesn't mind hunting us. <laughs> so, yep, we're yeah. a meal. That's kind of scary. Right. And in a sleeping bag, it's kind of like a hot pocket with the <laughs> sleeve on it. Right? <laughs> I've heard described as the uh, soft taco of the bear world. <laughs> soft taco. <laughs> yeah. Bear attacks usually happen very quickly mm -hmm. because the bear doesn't normally spot you from a half a mile away and stalk you, although that may have happened. Right. It's normally one of those bump into the bear things. Sure. Um, 
you are at too close a range, and one of the things a bear does is he gets, he may be very defensive. He may just say, I need to knock this guy around mm -hmm. a little bit and get out of here. Right. Um, that happens. Yep. And, and then, the, or it may be, like you say, the sow protecting her cubs, um, or grizzlies will defend their kill. Mm -hmm. And their kill might be what you shot Right. The day before and then couldn't find that night or something. So you go back to camp. They you, claimed it. You come <laughs> out the next morning to come get your elk and the grizzlies got it. Right. And and I know there have been a number of hunters attacked in that same scenario. Yeah. Um, right. Kind of scary. Which is why when I'm hunting, I always have a sidearm. You know, there's the whole, oh, I just walk away for a moment. I set my rifle against the tree and I'm gutting out the animal. And then you get attacked from behind or, you know, whatever, you know, and that even with two guys, you know, one guy gets attacked and we had a mountain biker in this state mm -hmm. and his friend was trying to hit the bear with his bike or whatever and the guy ended up getting killed and yeah, yeah, not, not, not good stuff. Bad things happen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so traditionally it's between bear spray and firearms or, or the just pretend you're asleep. Right. I, I don't Lay know how on the ground. I don't know how well I could do with that one when a bear is batting me around. <laughs> right. I might get a little excited. I don't know. You you could try. Yeah. And and I don't put down bear spray. Bear spray's been shown to be effective. Um, but this is a gun channel. We like right. our guns. You know, and I am more likely to rely on my gun. I don't like bear spray because I don't want the bear coming back around. I don't want to just piss off the bear and I like guns. You want to finish it. But I am thinking when I'm walking with my dog, who is a frequent attack of, of, of other dogs, he just has a kick me sign on his back. <laughs> I'm thinking about carrying bear spray for dogs, actually. It works just, well. Just to get him away. Yeah. 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 Even regular, just small pepper spray right. works great yeah. on a dog. So can we agree that, that firearms are the better solution? Bear! Oh, we can agree. Okay. Well, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, yeah, bear attacks are uh, fairly rare, and I, I was looking up some statistics on that, and what I came across several times was North America, about 11 fatal attacks a year. Mm -hmm. And they're talking Canada and the U.S. there. Mm -hmm. I don't think Mexico was included in that. Um, there are a few bears down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, it's not a lot, but that surprised me, 11 fatal attacks. Right. I'm thinking, okay then, that's worth... It's worth knowing about if you're going to be out there, whether you're horseback yeah. riding or backpacking or whatever, you know, just wandering around the woods. You know, I like to go out and do wildlife photography. Yeah. Um, well, like you said, someone just down the road was attacked, so that's enough reason for me to uh, think, absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to take this super, super seriously. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I don't think it's going to matter to me at the, in the heat of the moment if it's a black mm -hmm. bear or a grizzly. Right. It's a bear. Right. Yeah, and that, that's enough of a problem. But you've thought ahead, right? I if have. I'm going to Alaska, I'm going to get a little bit more serious. And if around here, I'm going to maybe do something a little bit more, you know. I could get away with general a... General purpose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a lighter, a lighter, less powerful gun mm -hmm. or something, yeah. You know, because, and then surely because of the, the size difference, most of our adult male bears around here that I have been after are around 300-ish pounds mm -hmm. and about six foot in length, six foot right. squared. Yeah. And, and the grizzlies go way over that. Oh, yeah. Way, way, way <laughs> over that. <laughs> they're, they're like a whale compared to a fish, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just like, this is a huge yeah. animal. Now, there are some big black bears, too. Sure. Six, six seven hundred pounders, but mm -hmm. they're not common around here. I know mm -hmm. there's places out there in the U.S. that grow great big black bears. Hmm. Interesting. So let's talk about, you know, this is about 10 millimeter versus 44 mag. Let's give some details on, on each of these, what we would call maybe canonical carry weapons, you know. Like I said, the five inch, I feel like is a good compromise between the four and the six. The six starts to hang down. It's not very practical to conceal even with the coat as much. I like the five because it's gonna give you good performance. It's gonna handle well, you know. And a four is no slouch either. No, no, they're they're all good. It kind of also depends on a guy's build, maybe. Sure. Some guys could carry a bigger, longer revolver. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I settle on the five inch. I've had them shorter. I've had them longer. I went through a whole bunch of different forty sure. fours over the years. This yep. one's stuck around for quite a while now. Yeah. So yeah. 
good old 629, right? I've got two of those. I've got the four and the six. You've got the five. So you've taken mine, both added them up and divided by two, essentially, right? <laughs> Is that average. what I did? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But you've got the full underlug, which I really like. I do, too. I think it, it looks good and adds a little bit of weight out there mm -hmm. forward, which is good because 44 Magnums recoil. Yes. They really do. It helps stabilize Our, it just that little bit. <laughs> yep. No, just, just a little bit of help, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, six shot, mm -hmm. just like in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And is six going to be enough? It's a question that you really have to, to have, have to think about. 44.7 ounces unloaded. And uh, with the 10, we've got a 4.6 inch barrel. So it's actually pretty close. Similar. You know, 0.4 inches difference between the two, which is a fairly level playing field, but 27.5 ounces unloaded. A lot less. But we're going to add 16 rounds if we put in the pipe. It's going to get heavier. Yeah, so it, it kind of it kind of would level out just a little bit. <laughs> I, I think Glock on their uh, info page has it listed at 39 ounces loaded, mm -hmm. but I don't know if that was loaded with 155 grain bullets or sure. 200 grain bullets. Who knows? But yeah. so it's getting up there close to the empty weight of a 1911-45, about 39 ounces. Right. Yep. Oh, interesting. So still pretty good. It's you know I've I've carried the fully loaded Glock 20. On, uh, with an OWB holster, mm -hmm. and I like OWB. I, I normally carry IWB, right? And right. Uh, it just feels so much more comfortable that I, I feel like I can carry a little bit more weight and not even notice it, mm -hmm. you know? And there's some other real interesting holsters available that are tailored towards outdoorsmen, mm -hmm. you know, right here on the chest. Yes. I don't have one yet, I'm looking yep. into it. No, so. that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good option. Yep. There's no hiding it when it's there, but <laughs> true. But it's easy Unless to get to big, and out big of the coat. way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so those are the two firearms. Uh, in terms of capacity, here's a chart, right? A visual sometimes helps you really quantify something that looking at numbers might not really do. So we've got a lot of that in this video. So the 44 Magnum, you're just stuck with six, right? There's six cylinders, six chambers in the cylinder, right. and, and that's all you got. With the Glock, you could carry it with 15 and nothing in the pipe, or you could carry one in the pipe plus the 15 in the mag, and that gets you 16. So the Glock 20 has 267% of what the six shooter has. And That's a big difference. I see that as a huge difference, and probably uh, for a lot of folks, that would be the, the decision-making thing right mm -hmm. there because mm -hmm. you're carrying so much more ammunition. And I know we could reload and all, but hang on there, Mr. Grizzly, I need to get my <laughs> speed loader. I, right. It's not gonna work out well. Right. And the Glock, you just keep shooting. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's a big point. Yes, but the 44 is more effective with each shot. We'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. Okay, so the ballistics. So tell us about the load. You've, you've got a 200 grain load for the 10 mil. Right and a 300 grain load, both with XTP bullets right. on the 44 mag. Yeah, I, I actually really like the symmetry of that. It's like 200 and 300, great, you know? <laughs> and uh, interestingly, both of the loads uh, came in at around 1,000 feet per second, a little mm -hmm. over 1,000 feet per second mm -hmm. from these guns. So while the velocities were very similar, the gunpowder behind that was actually fairly different. Quite different. 7.1 grains mm -hmm. of CFE pistol for the 10 millimeter, 17 and a half grains of H110 in the 44 Magnum, and yet the velocities yeah. are almost the same. Now, call that gunpowder. Did you guys notice that? It's smokeless powder. It's propellant. Correcting myself. Okay. <laughs> and you can see that here on the energy, yeah. right? Uh, the energy should be relatively proportional to the charge weight overall, right? Now I know there's different, you know, densities of each powder in terms of their energy, their energy density, but you can see here we've got, what, 500 foot-pounds of energy for the 10 millimeter auto and 800 for the 44 Magnum. That's a pretty big difference. It hits harder. There's no yes. doubt about it. Right. And how much does that matter? We're going to have to wait for the ballistics gel to look at that. Uh, the bullet weight, 200 and 300. It's a nice clean number. And with sectional density, you can see here on that far right graph, the edge also goes to 44 Magnum. So there's no question, 44 Magnum is the more powerful round. Yes. But the real question is, how many shots do you need? And if you have less, if you have more of less, or you have less of more, what is going to get you the desired result? Right. 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 
Uh, one of the interesting things that we did was we had guys shoot three shots on steel at close range, simulating approximately the vitals of a larger bear at close range. Because we thought, you know, part of this effectiveness equation is if you're getting charged by the bear or if you're in a close encounter and seconds count, you know, what's that going to look like? Bear! Yeah, you need to put some holes on that bear <laughs> in a hurry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, uh, it, and I have to admit that there are guys that are going to look at my time there on the Glock mm -hmm. and go, why oh, the guy is so slow? I haven't shot a Glock in a long time. That's my excuse. Um, right. Also, we're not in the middle of a, we're not we're not in the middle of a speed steel competition here. We're okay. We're disoriented. We're reacting. You know, and and handling the situation. Yeah. It's, it's a completely unexpected kind of deal, and you know, it's going to take a little bit more time to to respond accordingly. Bear. And with the revolver, well. I'm not Jerry. <laughs> right. I can't, like, <laughs> I can't shoot like that. <laughs> I can't even believe that when I look at that. So we're at about a second and a quarter for the three shots with the 10 millimeter auto. And we're a little over two seconds with the 44 Magnum. So 67% longer in elapsed time to shoot those three shots. But if you can get three shots off in a little over two seconds, that's still going to do a lot of damage. And again, each shot does a lot more damage. Well, a lot more. It does some more. You have yeah. to figure that out. Yeah. But they're both powerful handguns. Sure. And they're both doing a lot of damage mm -hmm. with each shot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, you know, apples and apples for bullet types, but apples and oranges a little bit for gun types. Yeah. And, and there's <laughs> advantages to each. Yeah, so this is, this is all looking at it on paper. What I want to do next is share with you what happened when we got out the ballistics gel. So why don't we start with the 10 millimeter auto ballistics gel. Now, at what range did you shoot this? We were about five yards. Okay, so 15 feet away, that seems like a reasonable... Seemed like bear defense distance. Yeah. In fact, you better have put a hole in them by then. <laughs> right, otherwise things are really going bad. Okay, so let's do a quick watch through here. Boom. Not nice, bad. Nice wound cavity, wound channel. We've got good penetration. We're into the second block. And if we scrub this, let's go back. Okay, so kind of frame by frame. You can kind of see the expanded wound channel there. A lot happens in each frame. Yes. And that's yeah. about 20 inches total. Okay. Penetration yep. and a pretty good wound channel. Yeah, and keep in mind this is happening at 4,456 frames per second with our Edgertronic SC2+. Plus. So that is that is a really quick event, and it's kind of funny how you know the bullet goes a little bit further and then it kind of springs back a little bit as it's bouncing around more or less inside uh, the ballistics gel. And when I measure it, I'm measuring it to where mm -hmm. I found the bullet in the block, not yes. not the extra two or three inches yes. it went and then came back. So the final, the final penetration yep, number, where, where more, it is. more or less. Right. Okay. Well, that's a, that's a great result. Why don't we next look at the 44 Magnum? Let's play the footage. Same distance, correct? Right, five yards. Okay, here we are. Wow, almost to the third block. Yeah. <laughs> hit harder too, look at that first block bouncing around. Yeah, we had 30 inches of penetration with the 44. Yep. And this is kind of a soft flesh analog, right? This is not bone and skull, you know? Right. So, you know, that, that could be where the 44 mag would really have the edge. You know, this can't necessarily capture that. I'm, I'm wondering if we had the ability to put that in the ballistics gel, kind of what we would see. That'd be interesting. We, we could do something like that. I like, though, that we're measuring all this in the ballistics gel every time. Mm -hmm. Gives us a really consistent medium to mm -hmm. test in. Yeah, time after time after time, it's about the same. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that's the playthrough of the ballistics gel experiment. So let's next talk about the numbers. So both of them did damage, obviously. You can see that ballistics gel responding pretty oh, yeah. positively, right? Yep. Uh, in terms of the penetration, though, the 44 Magnum went about 50% more. It was 30 inches total compared to 20 inches total. That's significant, I think. 
Yeah. You know, win, win for the 44 on that one. Yep. But we knew it was a more powerful cartridge. Yes. And, and so I think the critical factor with that is, are you going through the skull or not? Yeah. Yeah. You know? And then, of course, there's different bullet types, too. These are semi-expanding for this particular application, the Hornady XTP. All sorts of hard cast, you know, oh. all heavy penetrating options, you know, that we could have used. We This was our apples to apples option that we had for bullets. Now, right? right. And, and yeah, some guys are going to say, well, you would never use uh, hollow points for bear defense. Mm -hmm. And other guys are going to say, well, why not? I hunt bear with them. Sure. Um, <laughs> Good point. Yeah, you know, it's like, okay, <laughs> fair enough. Um, so I don't know, but they were both Hornady XTPs, two different sizes. It seemed like a really yeah. good, useful comparison, and I, I'd be happy carrying either one of these, at least yeah. around here. Yeah, and if you look at the wound channel, we had four and a half inches approximately with the 10 millimeter auto. We're using kind of screen capture from the ballistics gel here. This is not super precise, but we did have a reference ruler in frame that we were able to use, and 4.75 inches to the 44, for the 44 Magnum. That was pretty close. It's kind of like it, the velocity. It was, close. yeah. Not, not that much difference in the diameter yep. of those temporary wound channels. Yep. Uh, 44 smacked that first block around a little harder. <laughs> but yeah, it just, you know, it's just a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, really good stuff. So at the end of the day, this is kind of a trade-offs thing, right? It is. Kind it of is. The, the, do we get more rounds with less effectiveness per round? Do we want the less rounds with more effectiveness per round? You know, as an old revolver guy, I have to admit, I'm very impressed with the automatic, the mm -hmm. 10 millimeter automatic. Mm -hmm. um, I might have less of an advantage if I got one because it'd probably be a 1911. <laughs> so I wouldn't have a whole lot more. I'd still have more rounds than I do with my six shooter. Right. But right. it is so controllable and easy accuracy. Yep when you're shooting with that thing, mm -hmm. easy to keep it on target, you can shoot faster, yeah. um, faster, yep. accurate. So there's, there's a lot of benefits to it. But when you start looking at the Glock and you've got 16 rounds, mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of a game changer right there. It is. Now one, now one thing that we didn't really mention so far is if we're up against the bear and we push into his hide, it's out of battery, right? It's not gonna, it's not gonna fire plus depending on what's going on, is everything gonna feed correctly? And am I gonna get any malfunctions, you know? Probably yeah. not. The Glock is super reliable. It you know, is. I haven't had a bit of trouble with it. Uh, and if you're confident with your load, that's fine. But in freezing weather, sub-zero, you know, there's that thought in my mind of, is it gonna go off? Whereas with the revolver, use my 329 PD, this is a, an ultra lightweight revolver. You know, we can push that up into the bear, boom, 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 and still have an effective weapon. That's a really scary thought, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I, I think I'd be wanting to pee my pants regardless, you know, <laughs> if a bear was attacking me. And it's really what's going what's gonna to work at first instinct, you know, without having to think about it. Um, the Glock is good, I think, to compare in this case because there is no safeties. Right. You know, the safety is the holster and, and the double blade trigger. It's grab and go. It's grab and go. So is the revolver, double action, right? Close quarters say that it's into the hide and you're pulling the trigger. Yeah, yeah. you better keep pulling. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're not going to be, you know, getting the, the single no. action mode going and, no. and, and all that. Yeah. Either can definitely work. You know, it's, it, it is partly personal preference, but I think at the end of the day, I just feel better about the revolver. Interesting. Yeah, I think each shot means more to me than just having a whole bunch that's maybe two thirds as effective. But I think that would be more the case in Alaska. I think around here I'd be all right with the with the Glock 20. Oh yeah, yeah. Chances of getting a great yep. big giant bear around here, not so good. Bears, right. yes. Great big giant bears, no. Yep. And I like the idea of shooting what you shoot best. Yes, you know, yes. That's, that's the gun you should probably work with. Mm -hmm. make those hits. Now, I was flying to the SHOT Show a few years ago, and I happened to be sitting on the plane next to an Alaskan guide, hunting and fishing guide type dude. And I was talking to him about, oh, well, what do you carry? What, what Do you carry a revolver? You know, Do you like the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum? Which I actually have right here. I, I, I couldn't resist. You know, that's, that's, that's my real answer to it. And he said, oh, yeah, I don't bother with the Glock 
20 or a 44 mag or anything like that. I, I carry a SBR AR on a chest harness and it was, I don't know, like a 458 SOCOM and he's probably got who knows how many rounds, 20 or 30 rounds, whatever, you know. And it's, uh, I thought, okay, well, that's the big heavy hammer if you're really in imminent danger. That's kind of like a semi-auto 4570. <laughs> you know? Yes, great, right. great big bullets and a good size magazine. Yeah, yep. I could, I could see that working. It's kind of the best of both of these worlds. You know, you have the capacity, you have the lethality, you have kind of everything. But that's a big package to hang off the front of you. It is. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of different options out there. I think we've taken a look at two good options, two mm -hmm. popular options. I mean, for decades, people were saying, yeah, you if you want a, if you want a bare defense gun, get yourself a 44 Magnum revolver. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And in recent years, the 10 millimeter semi-auto has steam, gotten really popular for that yeah. same role because of some of the attributes that it has. Yep. Yeah. So what are you going to carry for bear defense? Well, I don't have a Glock, so <laughs> we'll I, pretend you do. I, I carry my forty-four. Okay. Yeah, that's a good answer. And and down here a lot of times a uh, three fifty-seven Magnum because mm -hmm. it's only a three-inch barrel. It's light, mm -hmm. easy to carry. Sure. On the yeah. odd chance you come up against a cougar or a bear, you mm -hmm. can probably I, take care of yourself. I've got something. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Our question for you is: What are you going to carry for bear defense? Where are you going? Is this the the lower 48, is it uh, Alaska? And what are you gonna load it with? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. Thank you, Guy, for coming. This was a really fun one. It I was. Like this one. It was. <laughs> we blew up some more gel blocks. I yep. like that. <laughs> awesome. That concludes this story, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're going to want to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.